following up on economic insights. I'm uh, engineer Mike Poko, managing director of Finami Project Limited. My name Oluwashio Hassan. Engineer comes as a result of uh, practice, a profession. Over the years, indigenous contractors in Nigeria have recorded a low level of participation and have often been sidelined in large-scale construction activities. The question now asks is, does governments lack confidence on indigenous companies in the construction industry? It's neither here nor there, from what I see. It's true that the indigenous uh, firm uh, do not have a level playing ground with the foreign counterpart. And uh, of course, you know that uh, the policy makers, handlers, uh, this thing has to be political. And uh, everything seems politics, politics, politics. So at the end of the day, you discover that uh, professionalism is uh, pushed to the background while politics takes center stage. Now, when you have that scenario, what do you do? So that is why I say it's neither here nor there. But I think the real problem has to do with uh, 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 our political system, you know, because uh, some of these things are highly technical. And by the time you politicize it, you cannot get the best out. So I think it's what is affecting this industry also. I agree. When you want to do a job that is highly technical and you are not the inventor of the technology, there is no way you will give the job to somebody who is going to borrow the technology. And when there is a problem with that job, he cannot solve the problem. So if the government is biased on some special projects, I agree with that. But if there is a technology that can be borrowed by an indigenous contractor or a consultant, as the case may be, and then the job can be managed indigenously without having to call anybody from anywhere, then I don't think there is any reason to give the job uh, to uh, a foreigner. But if government is biased, most of the time they have a very strong reason to do so. Take for instance the rail construction that is going on. Do we have the skill? Do we have the expertise? Can we build it? We can't. We can't deceive ourselves. Such jobs require experts to do them. So you have to bring them in. Let them do their job. And most of the time you discover that what government does is that when these things are done, they even engage these people to manage them, which is very, very important. Hello viewers. Welcome to your program. It is Economic Insights. Thank you for joining us on this edition. Now, we are taking a topical look at the various issues affecting infrastructure development in Nigeria and also the challenges indigenous players are going through in construction industry. It promised to be an interesting conversation. I'll be back after this time out. Finami Project Limited is uh, uh, owned by uh, in Nigeria, that is myself, and uh, it was incorporated with uh, CAC in 1998, but did not start operation till uh, January 2003. And uh, since then, we are born in the construction industry. 
basically we are into services what we call services engineers uh, that is electrical engineering and uh, mechanical in mechanical you have a uh, plumbing you have uh, air conditioning ventilation transportation and uh, lift plus or lift and the rest of the things so that is exactly what we do in the construction and of course uh, uh, we also have a, a security aspect of it, communication, fire protection and uh, prevention. So in summary, that is exactly where, what we do. And uh, the approach, we have an approach that we employ in uh, carrying out our scope of services to make it uh, simple, easy for us and for our prospective clients. Uh, we divide into three groups. Uh, stage one has to do with uh, the feasibility study, go to site, have an overview of what you have, and then plan economic and all the strategies. Then after that is done, we have what we call a preliminary design, which is submitted to our client to go through front and back, front and back, until finally we have a working concept and then based on that we go on to the main design for execution and of course after the district design contract is awarded and then we go into project management and monitoring where you go for time to time or if there is full residency the engineer will be at the site permanently supervising the project to ensure that what was designed is being carried out and implemented we wanted to contribute our little quota to the uh, engineering services aspect of Nigeria and uh, that's why we came in. Yeah, by the grace of God we have been involved with so many projects, uh, landmark projects. Uh, we work with a uh, bank, commercial banks. And even the APS Bank, at the moment, we are involved with about uh, two of their branches, APS Banks, within the country. Commercial Bank, the same thing, their housing estates and uh, things like that. We also work with uh, developers, like uh, Larus Development Partners. And uh, one of such projects in Abuja here, which was completed about two years ago, is the Jabi Lake Mall in Abuja here. We also have another one going on in Lagos called La Definition, which is on. And um, if we come home here in Abuja, we have some interesting projects like uh, the Fontage International School in Gudu in Abuja. I'm sure maybe you've seen it. And the head office complex for Raynor Construction Company, RCC in Jabi also, is there. And uh, we have uh, Watamila University that is ongoing that uh, we are involved with and a host of other ones. Even at the moment, we are working on the uh, Ivory Coast Embassy in Abuja here. We are involved in the Burkina Faso Embassy Abuja also. Interesting. Well, the challenges we had at the beginning is typical to any initiative problem of any, any business. You know, we are strange in the industry. So, <laughs> We needed to understand the terrain, so it was not easy, but by and large, we were able to overcome it. Uh, what are we facing now? Well, you know, now we are at the cruising level. We need to maintain stability. So you discover that uh, the challenges of stabilizing yourself and keeping yourself afloat is almost as difficult as it was at the beginning. But by and large, we are getting more matured, we are getting used to the industry, and I think um, we are able to uh, surmount the challenges. Uh, the other one that is um, common to everybody beyond our control has to do with uh, payment. Sometimes you work for clients and uh, you are not paid. By the time you work for three, four clients like that, you don't get your money. It's not funny. But so far, so good. That for us is uh, very, very important. 
we view that as line management uh, function, not only for our client, but also for the environment that we work in. So we discover that her health is wet and if you are not alive and healthy, uh, certainly the best cannot come out of you. And if our working environment is not safe or is hostile, there's no way we can work. So that is very, very important. And we ensure that the managing director and all the sectional heads act promptly on that issue. So we regard it as line management function. No bureaucracy. Uh, I will not agree with you on that area. I don't think it's a project management skill that we lack. I, 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 let me come into the infrastructure fully. Our problem from what I see is that we do not have a roadmap for our infrastructure development. If I ask you, you know better. What is our roadmap? What, are, what is our master plan? And say, look, in the next five years, this is what we want to do. In the next, okay, for instance, let's use a power generation. We say the next five years, we'll generate this. 10 years, it will be this. 20, just like that progressively. What is our roadmap? What is our master plan? There seems to be nothing. And you cannot get something out of nothing. So talking about technical or whatsoever, that, for me, that is not the real issue. The real issue that we should have a roadmap, a master plan, which will guide us. For instance, you want to start building. You don't have a design. What are you going to build? You dress up in the morning. You don't know where you are going. You enter the vehicle. To where? How do you dress up? How do you get your vehicle? What? So it looks complex. That really, for me, is the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria. We transfer to infrastructure, level playing ground, and uh, technical manpower. What? I think the real thing has to do with this roadmap master plan. And if we have it, we should take it away from politics. So that irrespective of whichever party or whoever is in government, that aspect is sacrosanct. They come in, they implement it. They map, the strategy is there. And I think that will guide us and we'll be better off. My advice, uh, my very self talking, I started as a young engineer too. Uh, be patient. Don't look for money. Try to empower yourself. Get the necessary skill, the necessary knowledge. And by the time you have the skill and the knowledge, with time, the next money will follow. But if you are say, oh, you are looking for money, you may not succeed. So my advice, be patient, be ready to learn. And spend time to learn and ensure you empower yourself. You get all the relevant skill and knowledge. I'm uh, Engineer Michael Cole, Managing Director of Finami Project Limited. I'm a simple man and uh, I believe in God. I believe in myself and I believe in the country called Nigeria. I love my country and I think uh, Nigeria is the best country I will have had been born. So I'm grateful to God and uh, I believe in hard work, you work hard, dedication, integrity, you will get the excellence. Thank you. Once is your time, Rikman. We must say a very big thank you, sir, for making our time to be with us out of your busy schedule. We really appreciate your time and your contribution and your support on the program, sir. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. You are welcome.
Forest Gold Engineering and Development Consultants Limited is a civil engineering consultancy firm registered with CAC in 2012. As a civil engineering uh, consult consultancy firm, uh, we render services such as uh, design, uh, construction, and uh, management of buildings. We do cost engineering. We do investigation. Uh, we also do water and waste, water design and management, and a few other uh, services. We also do trading. Well, the inspiration came from several places. Uh, my father, of blessed memory, himself was a, uh, an engineer. He was a mechanical engineer. And um, I have grown, you know, to see tools and uh, played with them. And then why I said the inspiration came from several places. I remember when I was in JSS1 then. And then uh, I was told to write on my future career. It was an assignment to all the students. And then, uh, you know, I asked a friend uh, that uh, what are builders called, people who build houses. And then he told me that they are called the engineers. So I asked a brother, I say, people who design houses, uh, how do you actually uh, uh, call them or describe them? Then he told me you describe them as uh, civil engineers. So he told me what to do and uh, I wrote, uh, I remember that I scored uh, the highest in class after the, uh, uh, the assignment. And then since then, it has always been registered in my mind that I was going to be a civil engineer and I followed up on my career. Sometimes when we are involved in bigger projects, uh, we only add uh, more uh, to the quality we've always had, even when we did the smallest. So I will not say there is a particular project that has actually made us who we are. Every project is important, from the smallest even to the biggest. But we've been, we've been involved in several projects. Um, uh, many of them, some in supervisory uh, capacity, some in design and supervision capacity and some design and build capacity. Some of them include the African Development Bank. Um, the, if you know PTDF very well, the building is a circular a building right beside PTDF. Uh, we played uh, a supervisory role there. We did the construction supervision. And then uh, World Trade Center were also involved. The design of RAM on the podium, uh, the design of uh, the tennis courts, um, uh, we were also involved in the design of the retaining wall for World Trade Center. I think that's about the highest, the tallest building in Abuja presently. Um, also, uh, the examination center for uh, the NJC, or okay, we call them FDSC, that is the Federal Judicial Service Commission, the design and the construction supervision, which is going on presently. We are also involved among many other projects that we've been involved. To start up as a consultant, especially in the uh, engineering environment, um, it's very tedious because first you have to start with yourself. You have to train yourself. You have to have the requisite qualification uh, to be called an engineer. You have to go to school. You have to read the relevant course. And then when you come out, you have to practice. That's very key because it is in the practice that you get the experience, you get the expertise and you get the knowledge to now interpret to help the society. Uh, after that, uh, you now have to register with the relevant body because uh, the Nigeria of today, you can't practice. If you do so, uh, if you practice and you don't have certificate, you are practicing illegally. So you have to register. So when you look at all these, those are the personal uh, uh, you know, uh, skills you have to acquire and then you have to you know, do training and retraining and the rest of them. 
Then, to establish a firm, you have to register. For the firm to function, you have to register with the relevant body. And now, that is on one side. On the other side, if you want to have government patronage, now you have to register, you have to be a contributor to PENCOM, to NSITF, uh, to ITF, you have to be on the list of BPP, that is Bureau of Public Procurement. Uh, if you put a figure, a price at the end of all these things that I've mentioned, starting up, even if you register the company today and you want to patronize with government tomorrow, and you have to be tax compliant, even if your tax rate is zero, you have to be tax compliant. If you put a figure behind all this, there's maybe you're looking at three, four million to start. That is a big challenge. But, you know, what is worth doing is worth doing well. One thing is, if your mind is focused on doing something, money shouldn't be an obstruction. So we are here. In the construction industry, uh, largely, uh, safety is very key. That is why when you have a project uh, site, you must have a health and safety professional uh, who is going to give orientation to anybody who visits the site, uh, who is going to ensure that every member of staff who works on that site conforms to the norms to ensure that everybody is safe so that you can have a safe working condition. And then you talk about hoarding the site, you have to hoard the site because there are obscene activities going on in every site that you don't want the passers-by you know, to be involved in. So what you do is that you hold the site, you keep the site safe, you give signs and symbols, and then you make sure that there is no injury, not even one, let alone somebody dies on the project site. All this you do to make sure that you ensure that everybody who is working on that site is safe, and then they are also as good as being able to do their work because of the environment you have provided. I have paid my dues. Uh, I will always encourage uh, the young ones also to do that. Uh, don't try to jump into jumping. I have learned to crawl when I need to, to walk when I need to, and to run if need be uh, and when I need to. Um, West Coast Engineering actually began as a non-registered company. We practiced for like three, four years uh, before it was finally registered. We were doing jobs uh, with the company. Then when we got to the point where we feel the company should move to the next level, we did so, you understand? Because there is something that drives us that we can do better. We can do better. We have been engaged and we have been involved in several you know, projects uh, in this country. And then I want also to advise the young uh, engineers who are coming that it is very, very important that they make themselves employable before they seek employment. And when they finally get the employment, they should not sit comfortably on the job. If they have the requisite knowledge to further, there is always an opportunity given to every person to move forward in life. Maybe you, want, you say you want to spend 5, 10, 15 years here, and then you move on after that 15 years. Don't let nothing change that. That's my advice. My name, Oluwa Shion Hassan. Engineer comes as a result of uh, practice, a profession. Uh, I am uh, a father, uh, first a husband before a father. Um, I am a father of uh, boys, and by the grace of God, I'm also uh, a man of God, you know. People say all work, no play makes Jack a dull boy. But I say all work, no praise eh, makes Jack an ungrateful boy. So despite the fact that we are busy with our work, we still have or we still find time, you know, to thank God who has given us the knowledge uh, to do what we are doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is your time, we're coming. Thank you so much. A very big thank you for making our time to be with us. We thank really appreciate you. your time. Out of the busy schedule, we appreciate your contribution also. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Kingsley. I appreciate it.